first thing when you get these, there's really not any way to to check a lot of stuff other than make sure your switches. Okay, so all the switches, knobs, everything feel pretty good. And that's the first thing you want to check. The second thing you want to do, these things are awfully tight. You want to loosen them up a little bit so you can move them, but don't make them so they're sloppy. Because these you're going to have to move when you put the handles on. Okay, it moves. Okay, that's good enough. I would say there's a few ways you can do this. You have to put these a certain way so you can put this on, but we'll go over that later because there's a few things I want to go over quickly before we get that. We're going to have to do the guide rail and the aluminum rises and attachments that go on it that'll be the first thing that goes together so anyways we're going to put this off to the side for a sec second thing you want to always take a look at make sure there's nothing loose okay we can get to check that one later oh, actually i can do it right now you gotta pull it forward that one was pretty pretty good okay so you want to go over quickly all of your stuff real fast and just give it a little turn everything's tight go aside for a bit so what we need to do is the guide rails well I'm sorry the risers no rails whatever the guide rail in the front which is a really nice piece of aluminum look at that beautiful the machine is just such nice quality the machining so you have your off your idle your mill power afterburner and maximum a b okay so when you take these rails here it doesn't matter which way you put them, which, which side they're on. But when you take these here, you want to make sure that these grooves are going to be to the outside. So this is what you're going to be looking at. Well, it's going to be way up there, but you want to make sure that these grooves on the top are to the outside because that's going to play a role on the bottom when it comes time to connect this all together. So basically, I know I'm just gonna give you a quick rundown, you guys. I'm not gonna drag you through watching every screw get loosened and tightened. So you, you'll have to loosen some of these up higher. Okay, so you just bring them out enough so you know you can get it slid on. It should be good. Good. Give this one a few more turns. Okay, so what you're going to do is you take it like so. So it's going to need to be loosened a wee bit more. Okay, once you get it in the groove, it automatically locks itself in there so you want to line it right up with this edge because your next one is going to go right on down there okay so we'll just get it snug now if you find one of the screws slips down a little too far and you're having a problem turn it upside down the nut will fall down put a little pressure enough on your screw so you can tighten it up the screws on here have one flat 
washer and one lock washer even if it needs adjusting later we can always take care of that okay so we got this like so remember you want the rails to the outside okie dokie let's put this look at this this thing's I showed it to my friend yesterday real quick. He was like, oh, it goes like that. I was like, yeah, it goes like that. It's, it's, it's crazy, this thing. It's like a big banana what handles. Nice piece of equipment, though. Very nice. Okay, so you want your four screws for the guide rail. Four screws. Wow, that was totally weird. They left just like two of these which go they're, they're beveled which go on the bottom of the the throttle base you can tell they're tapered what needs to be done is these are going to go into here well not with the big washer on it but let's see these fit in there so long story short I don't want to get these all mixed up. As soon as we get the base done, then we'll, uh, the rail done here, then we'll move on. It would have been a lot quicker if everything was where it was supposed to be in one separate pouch for every individual area. All right. So, this has got to go like yay. See what happens here? Okay. So you gotta take these, put them on, and get a couple threads in there. Here we go. Okay, I'm hoping that these slide on easy enough. I'll try that again. That's the thing, you gotta kind of finagle it around to get it on. Okay, let's get this tightened down just a little bit. Once you push down on the lock washers though, it tightens right up. Don't strain your brain worrying about getting all this perfectly aligned. Just give it a quick line up. So we checked everything on here. Everything's nice. Everything's snug. Next is on to the base. Okay, so there's really no like written law on like which way all this stuff's got to go. Like as far as like these, you just got to like, you know, hey, they say put one to that, put one this way. It doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as you connect it correctly. I don't want to give it just a little one. That one in there. And then you have this long one that goes all the way through. You pull it back up. Goes right through the middle. Okay, so. I was thinking about this and I really think I would rather put it wouldn't matter which way the screw goes through but myself I, I would want to look at the neat end on the inside would be the part that you would see your inside the far side that's not going to be with you that you can see that's where you put the screw and washer on anyways so we got something like this you put that screw all the way through flat lock washer and these little goddamn screws I always drop everywhere 
try not to drop them inside that could be a real hassle okay so you get it snug snug as a bug you don't want these things too because you don't want them too tight too much resistant because there's no detent on here because of this serves the purpose as the detent and this lined up is always fun, I imagine. So we got our dog fight button. Yeah, baby. Uncage, cage, man ring. Okay, this is your VHF, IFF, IFF out, UHF. These are all your radio channels. Over here, you have your speed brake. IDI cursor. Got a button you can push in. Antenna up and down raise. I don't. I, I'm not. I'm not that familiar with how it works because I didn't have. With the F18, the capability of using this stuff. So now I've got to kind of read up all on it today. And this is almost like a weapon select button, but it's man ring and i guess going straight into dog fight will allow you to fire missiles and guns at the same time something like that all right so it looks pretty good okay we'll get this cage finished up and wrapped up and Okay, I'm gonna pull this up, take my tape off. Now you wanna use the right hand side to go into this. Gotta line it up with the groove, get it all the way in nice and snug before you tighten it. Okay, now we've got it. Give it just a little turn. It's on there, sweet, shall we? And you want to just pop it on there. Pull that wire over it a little bit. And pop that on. It's out of the way. Out of sight, out of mind. Okay, so where do we go from here? All right, obviously, yeah, yeah, this goes on like so. Oh, I see. Oh, that's going to be fun adjusting that. Once it's all screwed down, it'll be a little easier. Okay, you want it right on that wheel in the center. All right. So you got to get this lined up just right. The screw holes and two screw holes that are close together are beveled. Goes into the bottom, slides over the top, and voila. There it is. Okay. That was not as bad as I anticipated. Slide it down for now. And we're going to just snug up very little snugging snuggling okay bring it on over good angle can you see it yeah okay bring this over in the middle This is hard with just one person doing this, kind of. There we go. See what I mean? Everything falls right in line.
make sure you go pull one end out. You might have to push one end in a little bit. You want to keep the same distance all the way dead center. The wheel doesn't stick out in the back. Beautiful. Well, it obviously doesn't go as far down as it locks there either. It's off, but it doesn't fall into the notch. Odd. It can't. The bars only go that far. There's a notch. Let me show you. It's hard to see. But there is a notch right there where it can fall into that says so completely off, but this handle just doesn't go that far back. And the screws are all incorrectly. So it looks like idle position is it. A couple screws to tighten, and that's it. So there it is, people. There it is. How I'm going to get it mounted on the traditional chair mount that I have is still the question. See what I'm saying? That's going to be the fun part. I just got to come up with a solution on how to get this on that comfortably. I mean, there's got to be a way if I got to drill some holes in something and, and run some longer screws through. But I'll figure something out. And then I'll, I'll do a little video and showing you how I, I get that squared away. All right. Well, while I'm back, I didn't feel right wrapping that video up 